Hi, in this tutorial we are going to check how to write a file on the SP32 FAT file system. As target board I'm going to be using a DF Robot SP32 Fire Beetle board. So, uh, this is the continuation of the previous video tutorial where we uh, checked how uh, we could start uh, using the FAT file system and the changes that were needed in some configuration files in order for everything to work. So, uh, if you haven't done it yet, uh, please take a look at that video and check the changes that you need to do in the SP32 partitions in order to be able to use the FAT file system. So, moving on to the code, basically the first part will be similar to what we already covered because we, we have already checked how to mount the file system, but I'm going to recap it here uh, in short. So we need to include the fat.h library, so we have access to all uh, the functionalities needed to interact with the fat file system. Uh, in particular, this fat extern variable, uh, that will be the one that will expose the basic methods to interact with the file system. So, but before we cover this part, uh, moving on to the um, beginning of the setup function, as usual, we open the serial connection so we can output some results from our program. And then uh, comes the procedure of mounting the file system. So, uh, as I've already mentioned in the previous video, uh, before we start interacting with the file system, we always need to mount it first. Um, so this should be always the first thing we do before starting to open files or writing files or reading files. This is done by calling this begin method on our fat uh, extern variable. Um, and basically, um, as an additional parameter, uh, we can pass this boolean value uh, set to true, uh, which means that uh, in case this mounting procedure fails, then the uh, fat file system will be automatically formatted um, so we can use it uh, correctly the next time we run the code. Take in consideration that the first time you use the file system, it always needs to be formatted. So this is why I typically uh, set always this flag to true uh, in order to be able to, to make sure that if it doesn't run the first time, it runs the second time. Of course, that depending on your application, uh, since eventually uh, mounting may fail because of other reason, uh, you may want to manually resolve the problem, refresh uh, the file system, or you may set this variable to true, and it will implicitly uh, format it for you. But uh, moving on with with uh, this this piece of code, basically this begin method will return a, a boolean value indicating if the mounting procedure was successful or not, and it's typically a good practice to make an error check for this uh, before proceeding with the remaining code. So assuming everything goes goes fine and and the uh, file system is mounted, we just print this message to the user saying, "Okay, everything is fine. You can uh, you can move on, uh, or the code is moving on to the rest of the the functionality." So now, uh, what we need to do in order to write a file is opening it. Uh, in writing mode. Note that the file doesn't need to previously exist because when we open a file for writing, if it doesn't exist, it will be implicitly created. So how do we do this? We open a file by calling this open method on our fat extern variable. So as I've mentioned, we use this variable to interact with the file system. And as first uh, parameter, we pass uh, the name of the file. Note that it includes here the path, indicating that this file is locating in the root uh, path of our file system. And then here is the name, I'm going to call it testfat.txt, but you can call it however you like, because this is just a very simple test. Of course, that uh, if you are uh, doing a real scenario application, uh, your, your um, uh, file naming should be meaningful, and the extensions you use should also be uh, suitable for the content it will have. In our case, it's just a simple, simple text file uh, for testing, so it can be a .txt uh, file. Uh, now, uh, taking in consideration that we want to open the file for writing, uh, a second parameter of the open method, we need to pass this constant, file underscore write, so the file is open for uh, writing. Uh, if we wanted, we could only open this file for reading, assuming that we did not want to to get to sorry to write any content on it. So here the constant would be different, uh, or uh, now just to give a heads up, 
for future tutorials where we are going to read files. Uh, this open method by default, if we don't pass this constant uh, with uh, opening mode, it will assume that uh, the default opening mode is for reading. Okay, so basically this is what we need to do to open the file, and then this open method will return as output an object of class file, and from this point onward we will interact on you with this um, file object uh, in order to be able to write to the file. Uh, one small parenthesis here is that. Um, as I've said in previous tutorials, the FAT file system is not the only type of file system supported by the SP32. There's also the SPI uh, FFS file system. So they are both different. The implementation of both file systems are different. But both have an opening method. And both, after, they, after we open the file, they will work with the same file class. So from this point onward, uh, the procedure is the same, independently if we are using the FAT file system or the SPE uh, FFS file system. So one particularity about this file class is that it overrides the C++ boolean operator, meaning that we can enclose um, this object in an if condition and basically um, if the value is true, uh, if, if assuming that uh, we, we are applying this and this is acting as a boolean, uh, boolean value, so if that value is true, it means that the file was correctly open for uh, writing. If the value is false and does here the negation, uh, basically it means that there was an error opening the file for writing. So this is a commodity that C++ offers, is that uh, we can overwrite some of the basic operators. So instead of us calling like some method like file is valid or file was correctly open, uh, we just need to enclose it, uh, this object in an if condition. And that way we can check if the file was correctly opened or not. So this is just a commodity um, or uh, syntactic way of getting this without uh, much code or without having to, to call a method. So from this point, uh, assuming uh, again that the file was correctly open for writing, we simply need to write the content to the file. And we have access to this print method that allows to write some content to the file. And this print method receives as input the string with the content that we want to write to the file. So I'm going to print here this very, very simple uh, test message. You can print uh, anything else you'd like. We are not going to read the content after being written in this tutorial. We're going to cover that in a future tutorial. But for now, we are going to just write some testing content and confirm that no problem occurs the, during the writing procedure. So one particularity about this print method is that it will return, return as output the number of bytes written to the file. So basically we can enclose it here in this uh, if condition. We are not actually checking if the total number of bytes that we have written were, were written. We, we are just checking if uh, some byte was written. But basically we are, we are checking if some content was written to the file and if, if at least one byte was written, we assume that everything was okay and we print this message, uh, the file was written. Otherwise we print this match message saying that uh, writing to the file, uh, the writing procedure failed. Of course that we could enhance here with the checking for the number of bytes to make sure that it was exactly the same number of bytes that we wanted to write, but I'm going to keep things uh, simple here. So to finalize, uh, after we write the content and assuming that everything went okay, we just need to call this close method on our file object to ensure the file is properly closed after we finish um, operating over it. And basically this is it. It's very simple to interact with uh, the FAT file system. Uh, and from this point onward, we should now have a persisted file in our file system. Even if we turn down the power of the SP32, uh, the file should not be erased. So I've already uploaded this code to my SP32. So I'm going to open here the the, the serial monitor. And as you could see uh, in my first attempt, the file system was correctly mounted and the file was written. But I'm going to run this again to show you this um, operating. So as before, the file system was mounted and the file was written. In this case, since I already had the file 
uh, from the previous uh, time I, I ran this code, it was obviously overwritten with with uh, the same content again. But if it's the first time you run this code, it should also work because if you open the file for writing and the file doesn't exist, the file system will implicitly create it for you. So uh, this is it. Interacting with the FAT file system is very simple and opens up a lot of possibilities that we are going to cover in the future. Hope you have enjoyed. Uh, hope you have enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.